I work on various IoT projects that often require ordering prototype PCBs. Unfortunately, I've made more mistakes than I'd like to admit, which has led to project delays. My goal is to quickly produce small PCBs in-house for evaluating new components and testing specific sections of final designs, also cutting solder paste stencils, and even engraving PLA 3D prints. To make all that possible, I recently picked up the Monport GA60, a 60-watt fiber MOPA laser. Big thanks to Monport for making this machine available to me at an amazing discount in exchange for an honest review. The machine arrived securely packaged in a solid wooden crate. Inside, everything was neatly protected by precisely cut styrofoam, making the overall packaging easily a 10 out of 10. My kit included a metal ruler with both metric and imperial markings, the thickest paper manual I've ever seen, protective glasses, two metal jigs to securely hold the workpiece in place, a USB drive, necessary cables, and several blank samples for initial engraving tests. The machine comes 99% pre-assembled. All I had to do was hand tighten two bolts, which was super quick and straightforward. The machine has an all metal body and has serious amount weight to it. On the backside, you'll find the main power switch, a port for the cover security switch, a rotary axis port, a ground connection, a USB port, and two exhaust fans. On the front side, there's a laser switch that powers both the main laser source and the focus stepper motors. The rest of the machine is directly powered with main switch. The mark button lets you repeat the last engraving job. The up and down buttons are used for semi-manual focus adjustment using the dot alignment method. Proper focus is achieved when the two alignment dots merge into a single point on the surface of the workpiece. And finally, the focus button automatically adjusts the focus to the top surface of your workpiece. Also, there is a possibility of focusing it manually by measuring the distance between the workpiece and this line. The included factory lens test results are listed on this sticker, and I'll need those later for calibration in light burn. My machine comes with a lens that have 175 by 175 mm working area. But Monport also sells lenses with different working areas. Before getting into testing, I 3D printed an exhaust fan holder because safety first. The fumes released during engraving different materials can be harmful, so having proper fume extraction is absolutely essential. The GA60 comes with free software called BSL CAD, along with a calibration file and the necessary drivers to run the machine. However, I'll be using Lightburn instead, so I'll only be installing the included drivers and importing the calibration file. After installation, I simply added a new device in Lightburn using the latest manual from Monport's product page, which also shows exactly where to insert the Galvo calibration values, and that's it. The whole setup process was actually easier than setting up my first 3D printer. The speed of a Galvo laser is on a whole different level compared to diode or CO2 lasers. Plus, with a MOPA laser, you can achieve color engraving on various materials. The key to getting great results is finding the right settings for each material. I started testing by engraving on PLA and ABS plastics. Since I wasn't sure about the starting parameters, I used the built-in material testing utility to find the optimal settings. When engraving, the plastic shouldn't melt. Instead, only the pigment in the plastic should change color. I only have black and green plastics to test with, and I already knew that white plastic doesn't engrave well. After numerous tests, I managed to achieve three different shades on black plastic and five on green. I'm really impressed with the engraving quality. It's sharp, clean, goes deep into the plastic, and is highly wear resistant. For making a solder paste stencil, I need to cut thin metal, specifically 0.1 mm stainless steel. For testing, I decided to start with 0.3 mm aluminum. As you can see, the machine has no problem engraving it. It's not just stripping the black paint from the surface, it's also blasting away the metal itself. You can actually see the metal particles flying off like dust. Cutting was even easier. After just three attempts, I dialed in the parameters perfectly, and it now cuts all the way through in just a couple of seconds. During the second test, I noticed that the metal sheet started to bend from the heat, which affected the cleanliness of the cut. It's not very noticeable when cutting text, but for cutting solder paste stencils, 
I'll definitely need to make a jig to hold the metal sheet firmly in place. Or maybe there's already one available for purchase. If you know of something, please let me know in the comments. I prepared some small PCB project files for testing. The material I used is FR1, which is often recommended for laser engraving because it tends to work well. However, after testing it myself, I have to be honest, it's not great. The copper foil is too thin and the overall quality doesn't meet my standards. On top of that, FR1 is an older material and has become quite rare these days, making it even harder to source. So I've decided to move on from FR1 and use FR4 instead. It's cheaper and widely available. The main issue people mention with FR4 and laser engraving is that it tends to burn the substrate, but I believe that's more of a parameter fine-tuning issue. A few YouTubers have mentioned that burning the substrate can even make it conductive. As you can see in my first test on FR4, the substrate turned black, mainly because I did too many passes. In the second test, I carefully adjusted the power and number of passes. So let's see what kind of result we get. I also noticed that it's crucial to position the board so the laser hits it as close to a 90 degree angle as possible. If the angle is off, it tends to remove the substrate beneath the traces. Once everything was properly dialed in, the process took exactly one minute. Now, let's take a look under the microscope to see how the traces turned out. It looks like all the traces and pads are intact. The trace thicknesses are between 8 and 10 mil, but I do notice some unevenness. Let me zoom in. Ah, now I see. I need to lower the step size to 0.02 millimeters, which should remove all those spikes. With that adjustment, it should even be possible to create traces as thin as 6 mil. If you're interested, I can put together a detailed GitHub guide covering every step, from Gerber files to a finished PCB. If that sounds useful, let me know in the comments. And of course, I couldn't resist doing a quick engraving on a keychain. This is still just a small glimpse of what the machine is capable of. It can also 3D engrave stones, brass coins, leather, and many other materials. If you're interested in the Monport GA60, you'll find my affiliate link and a discount coupon code in the video description below. Using them helps support the channel. In conclusion, it's a solid machine with a laser source rated for 100,000 hours, and it's definitely powerful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.